Good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, man, this literally does not work. Let's get open for business and let's wake up the football gods. Wake up, guys. It is Friday. We are one day away from the Dallas Cowboys having their dress rehearsal. But hold on before I do that. Let me do this for one special fan out there. Mm. the aroma of it it's incredible i love drinking my coffee in the morning you know before i get on to my uh, dallas cowboys it is so funny and i shouldn't even go there with this because um this is probably giving him exactly what he wants but you know there's a thing about being an idiot and backtracking. I just got to do this because you remember Brethren, you know, who uh, was always in here last year talking about how bad the Cowboys were going to suck and how great Matty Ice and Julio Jones were and everything else. He's going to be the highest paid quarterback. Julio Jones is going to get a new contract. He's still waiting on that contract, by the way. And uh, I tried to point out that, listen, man, how getting paid the most amount of money does not equate to necessarily winning. Kirk Cousins was the highest paid there for a while. How did that work for him? They were one step away from the Super Bowl, and last year with Kirk Cousins, they didn't make the playoffs, I believe. So, you know, I'm glad that your quarterback was highest paid there for a minute and things. Congratulations. You know, I hope Julio Jones gets his contract and everything else, and, you know, everything is fine there in Atlanta. But Kumar has a way of, since he's been blocked from the channel because he would just come in and just do so much nonsense, ends up sending me emails. And I just, and I don't want to give him play, but I just want to prove how much of an idiot he really is. He sent me an email, not once, not twice, but three times to remind me to watch the game last night, the Redskins versus the Falcons. Hey, Cowgirls fan, make sure you tune in tonight at 7.30 Eastern to see Matty Ice and a few of the Falcons starters dismantle the Washington Deadskins without Julio Jones and a few other side, uh, starter sidelines. We don't need Julio Jones tonight to win because we have Matty Ice and gang representing Atlanta Falcons Super Bowl Champions 2020. Here's the thing I always say. When you come into the locker room, okay, win, lose, or draw, come back with the same energy. Because after the Redskins game last night, I think the Redskins with Case Keenum ended up winning. And, and what I said to him in reply, I said, you know it's only preseason, right? Preseason means diddly. All you want to do is get through preseason healthy. Like last night, Cam Newton Ended up leaving with a left leg uh, injury. They said the uh, x-rays are negative, but he left the stadium in a walking boot. Not what you want to have happen two weeks before the season starts. You don't want to start the season already nicked up, coming off of, you know, shoulder surgery. So here's the reply I got from him last night. Before you go and try to throw Matty Ice and the Falcon starters under the bus, Please tell me how many quarters did Matt Ryan play? Also, Muhammad Sanu and Calvin Ridley also played only on one drive. And not even one quarter uh, plus, Julio Jones didn't play, period. So when you say the Redskins gave us an ass whipping, then you must be talking about the rookies that won't even make the team, you dumbass. I hate to say it, but... I think we really know who the dumbass is here. You know, it's amazing because you see the hype that people have about, you know, oh, we got Julio Jones, we've got Matty Ice, you know, we know they're great. They only played one drive. And he was, I think, 7 of 12, 7 of 14. I, I don't have it in like 70-some yards. You know, not, I'm not saying Matty Ice had a bad game, but they didn't get into the end zone. And yes, they were missing starters. Now, I want you to preface it that with our Cowboys last week, who we had one drive, we went 97 yards, our quarterback was 5 or 5, 
five of five for 63 yards, okay? No incompletions. And again, I say it was just preseason. It doesn't mean a lot. So I'm just bringing this guy up in this. And, and Kumar, you, you got the play that you wanted there, buddy. Okay. All right. So Zeke Elliott, we know that Marshall Falk is going to Cabo to work him out. We saw videos yesterday of um, – Zeke Elliott working out in the rain, you know, he's definitely in shape, you know, he's lost some weights. In fact, you know, Zeke, uh, you might want to come over to my house because you didn't lost all that weight, man. You know, we can get you eating here. You know, you just tell me what you want, steaks, uh, ribs, uh, pulled pork, you know, we'll get you eating up in here, no matter what it is, to make sure you got that game weight for the, the pounding of the season. We hear the Dallas Cowboys said that they offered him a contract between Le'Veon Bell and Todd Gurley. So we're talking about 14-2. to two. Um, 13 one somewhere in that range they've offered him, which was $57 million for Todd Gurley. So a lot of fans are out there that were saying, you know, take it, you know, you're a bum, you know, you, you had a contract, you should honor your contract and stuff. But see, the problem is, is don't hate the players. Hate the game. See, here's the thing. I understand Zeke Elliott's point because he knows that it's a finite time that I am a running back and have an opportunity to get paid. Don't be mad at the Cowboys for using the system and the tools that's there allotted to them. If they can go ahead and lowball a player because that's the way the system is, well, why are you mad at them? It's like you can't, uh, you know, it's hate the game. And let me give you a great example of this because this is what happens with running backs. And I'm going to talk about somebody who's actually on their Dallas Cowboys right now. Alfred Morris. Alfred Morris, drafted in the sixth round by the Washington Redskins. Okay, this is where they always used to say, you know, you don't draft a running back high. You draft them late in the round because, you know, running backs don't matter as much. So the Redskins drafted him in the sixth round. And when you go through and you start looking at his numbers, Alfred Morris was a beast his first three years. He averaged 1,321 yards his first three years as a six-round draft pick. But because he was a six-round draft pick, he pay, got paid basically half a million dollars. Now, because after his first two years, he played so many snaps, because you had to play 35% of the snaps of your team, um, he ended up getting a bonus, which bumped him up, which definitely helped him out. But basically, in his three years with the Washington Redskins, he ended up having 1,613 yards, more than Zeke Elliott's ever had in his, you know, single season. I mean, let me put that out there. He had 1,275 the next year, um, 1,074. And we're talking about with the Washington Redskins, the, the, the following year, the last year in Washington, um, 751. But we're talking about the Washington Redskins and their offensive line, which was not very good. And you're talking about on a losing team. By comparison, that's 3,900 and uh, 63 yards his first three years. Zeke Elliott, I know he missed six games because of the suspension, has 4,048. So you look at how much the numbers were comparable. But see, here's what happens with running backs. The Washington Redskins, they let him go after the fourth year. And the fourth year usually is the peak year for running backs. After that, it starts going downhill. So here it is with the Washington Redskins. He made basically $2 million in four years. So you start looking at this, and this is where you hit free agency. The Redskins let him go, didn't sign him, and he signed with us for like $2.5 million. And from that point on, 243, 547, 428, and he just re-signed with us for a uh, million dollars. So in his career, in his seven years, he made, was it seven years? Yeah, seven years. He made a total of about $7 million. So he's only averaged a million dollars a year. And unfortunately, this is the way it goes with running backs. And the only way, because here's the thing, the collective bargaining agreement is against running backs. Running backs have the shortest lifespan of any position in the NFL. Quarterbacks, you see, you know, Luke McCown last night for the Eagles, 40 years old, just got to camp last week, you know, had 200 yards, almost 200 yards passing. He's 40 years old. 
But by the time you get to be 28, most running backs, their career is done. And think about somebody like Alvin Kamara, who's with New Orleans, who right now is making about $800,000. And I know you'll say, well, they got Drew Brees. But understand, Drew Brees was throwing for over 5,000 yards on a regular basis, and the team was 7-9, and nine, three years. But because they have an Alvin Kamara, who is versatile, who not only runs, he catches and things, Drew Brees' numbers have come down, but their winning has gone up, and he is an integral part of the team. Now, the problem is, is he can't hit free agency for four years. When That's when you get that big payday. But by that time, the banner years of football will be gone for that running back. And the only ones, if you go through and you look at the guys that have been paid, here, make, make no mistake about it. There's only three guys that are running backs that are making over $10 million a year. When you think about there's five quarterbacks over 30, when you think about pass rushers that are over 20, you think about cornerbacks and linebackers that are over 15. You got Todd Gurley at 14. You got Le'Veon Bell, 13. You got David Johnson at 13. Everybody else is below $10 million. And I know to us, to me, I, I'd be okay. I'd be okay with a couple million dollars, but it's not apples to oranges because you're talking about a selective few individuals out there who are able to do this. There's not that many people on the planet. And when you are the cream of the crop, you should be paid as such. So when you think about the average salary, the franchise tag number for running backs is 10.9. You think of the average salary for the top 10 at that position, it's only 8.76, which is chump change. And so that's where you look at it and say, is what Zeke Elliott doing beyond just being greedy for himself, where it's a way that will help to affect change with all the running backs? Because make no mistake about it, the guys right now that are the top two getting compensation, both of them made waves to get there. And Zeke Elliott, as well as Melvin Gordon, both see that as well. That's the only way we're going to get paid. If we shut up and be quiet and wait till free agency comes, we won't get it. So tune in tonight, of course, 9 o'clock Eastern for our live stream. Um, we got all kinds of stuff to talk about because we got the game tomorrow night. We don't know if anything will break with the Zeke Elliott situation. Um, and also stay tuned. If we hear something, of course, you know we'll bring it to you. Uh, we may even take some calls tonight from everybody but the Atlanta Falcon fans. I'm Mark Holmes, and make it a great day, and make sure you – Live it to the fullest. I'll see you soon.